there is no such thing as no story. Like, you know, I, I think anything is a story. Like us in this room right now, it's a story. Like, you know, Shavala standing behind the camera right now, <laughs> breaking the fourth wall right now. Yeah. <laughs> I just completely destroyed this whole segment, right? So, <laughs> but the thing is, whether it's good or it's a not so good story, I think that's the thing. And I don't believe that we don't have good stories. But I think like what Laura says and what some of us here have said, it's about relativity. It's about what we term as good story because our audience have been influenced by Hollywood, by the West. I have been. I'll be a hypocrite to say that I'm not influenced by Hollywood or the West or European content or even Bollywood, right? So in comparison to that, obviously our Singaporean story will have a different feel about it. That does not mean that we do not have stories to tell. We just have a different sort of story to tell. It doesn't help when you know, some people don't want us to tell stories that doesn't favor them, you know? And there are a lot of great stories that we can, that we can tell. It's just whether we can tell is the problem, you know? That's the issue here. The very fact that we pride ourselves on being a multicultural, yeah. multiracial country, yeah. but sometimes we try to hide it by making ourselves all seem like one race, you know, all yeah. get along with each other, we're very happy. But I think it's important to surface these issues, whether in a local story or not, to talk about how we do get along with each other or how we do have arguments with one another, for instance, like the Indian curry incident and all those kind of things. So we, we, do, we do have arguments, not all nice and rosy, like a garden of roses kind yeah. of thing, which is unique. I mean, obviously other countries have multiracial yeah. conflicts as well but theirs is a lot more in the open mm. whereas we try to hide everything underneath you know like it all, yeah. we're all pretty all we're getting along with each other and all that but I mean that could be a basis of a Singapore story in so you know on some level other things like censorship also kind of comes into play to prevent a really truly authentic story from being told Boogie Street the movie was re-shown again in Singapore at our SG50's Singapore, uh, Singapore International Film Festival. Um, that was a 25th anniversary for us, the movie. And it was suggested that it should be shown again in Singapore. You know what happened? We didn't make it. The censor didn't make it, but they appealed and appealed. And Singapore International Film Festival's uh, staff was really great. They went and talked to uh, MDA and they said okay. And guess what? We were sold out in four hours after opening. And when we were at the showing, I was totally nearly brought to tears because um, I have people their age coming up to me and said, you know Matthew, I've been waiting to see this on big screen. So Matthew, so are you saying that 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 is still going to be an impediment, you know, like Nat said, to Story filmmakers yeah. telling yes. stories well, because they're going to say, hey, I have to self-censor, this is what I've got to say, and that may not be the whole okay, interesting let me, let story. Let me put this back to you. This happened in 2015. What do you think? I think that with within the show that I am a part of, I think we have touched a lot on, you know, the racial, the, the harm, racial harmony in, in that sense and how Singapore is such a melting pot and how these different racial families, you know, coexist within neighborhood and not anything and anything that could happen in the world is happening in this neighborhood. I think that within Tanglin, you know, we are able to tell a lot of these stories, but like you said, we have because we have such an early time slot, there are a lot of things that we cannot really talk about mm. in depth mm. because it's it's like an 8.30 time slot mm. where people are watching family, family time. <laughs> so you can't really talk about a, a lot of things. Um, but uh, I, I think that, you know, we should try to be more open-minded, but it's also hard, difficult, because yeah. uh, there are so many people that are controlling the channel, the, the mm. station. For me, it would be, um, the best experience would be the, with the hush because uh, I mean I played a Filipino domestic worker not not somebody who is from Singapore even though I am Singaporean <laughs> um, but um, the stories that were that were told in this series was actually pressing boundaries I think it is the first time that Singapore the Singaporean audience actually saw something okay I'm just gonna say it mm -hmm. like um, the employer having sort of an affair with the domestic worker and these things do happen mm. and because that because it actually pressed that boundary everyone was like whoa what the hell but this does happen but i feel that um singapore has a tendency to run away from that to run away from real issues 
and I'm just waiting to see when they would actually press the um, religion boundary. Mm -hmm. As we all know that, you know, Singapore, the, the, the real stories are, I feel, when the two, two races and the two religions clash and how the love actually managed to overcome that particular, because it's a huge problem in Singapore and that's one Singapore story that I think some countries don't even have. Because I think in Singapore there are a lot of things that we're afraid to tell. For example, okay, I'm doing the play without reason, right? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but anyway. Um, so it's about this Chinese girl and a Malay boy who fall in love um, and who want to get together, but there are a lot of things, there are a lot of racial problems and stuff. Um, so it's always about the Chinese girl <laughs> once needs to convert to be a Malay, uh, Muslim, Muslim, right? But we are not afraid to tell the other story. Like what if this Malay boy wants to give up his Muslim yes. thing? And um, if we tell that story, it will not be. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is that yeah. that's what's authentic. That are re those yeah. are real yeah. problems. You actually killed this one. I think the fun you've hit the fundamental problem here. Yes. The fear of authenticity. Yes. It's and not just that fear of authenticity. Because when you do that, yeah. censorship comes in. Mm -hmm. They pull yeah, yeah, the whole right. thing underneath yeah. you. Yeah. And that is why a lot of writers are writing, oh, we can't do this, I am the essay cannot. Yeah. Let's do this, I am the essay cannot. Why? <laughs> Director, why? why? Because you know government don't allow. Why not allow? So these are Correct. the things that hinders authenticity. Yeah. That yes. Isn't that correct? I'm kind of amazed that we got so far uh, in, in terms of what kind of works against us, the limitations that are put. Hey, there's a lot of censorship, for example. Yeah. There's a lot of national mediation and modulation about what gets out there. Particularly with TV, I think that the, right. uh, the ambition is really about uh, entertaining the general consumer mm, yeah. and not inspiring them to think for mm -hmm. more. You know, it's like exactly. putting up the mirror in the old days of the explorers going to the native tribes. Yeah. This is quite a rather cruel analogy that I'm using, but <laughs> hey, okay. you know, putting up the yeah. mirror to them, say, hey, you know, and then they get it through by it. Kind of building on like what you said about being controlled <clears throat> by um, what um, a larger corporation would want you to say like the like the government or um, yeah basically the government um, in in the mass sense la. I think what I would uh, I think how to slowly free a grip on that would be if um, everybody sort of as in locally everybody slowly but surely got more of an awareness about the arts as a whole basically when when you need money less you can talk more or you can explore more i think i don't yes, know yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. i mean if if we arts were in the hands i think i heard yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I, I mean, it's been talking about, it's been something that's been on a, talk, a, a talking point that arts sh should be in the hand of the people. I think Ong King Sen said that, like, recently. And um, I do agree because I think if we are, we take ownership of our art and what we want to say and we don't, and I, 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 I mean, I need to do more research on how to make that work, but I mean, if we slowly start taking more of an ownership and like the ability to fund ourselves if that starts happening more like then we can truly like say what we want to say and we can truly know hey this is maybe this is absolutely what we are about yeah so yeah i hope to see that <laughs>